Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to Celebrating Act 2, where John Coleman and I are delighted as always to speak with Manny Pacheco. Well, Manny, welcome back. Good to see you again. Yeah, we're firmly heading into the holidays. Let's get to it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, listen, Art says it's uh, always a pleasure, but I have a sensitive topic. I know that you were um, mm. good friends with a man who just died recently, radio icon, um, major figure in the world of uh, communications, Art LeBeau. Mm, right. And um, I know that because, first of all, he, he was in all the papers, all the trade press. His death was uh, heralded. And uh, you wrote a very nice obituary for him. Um, and I know that he was kind of a mentor to you. So yes, yes. I was. thought it would be, I wanted to ask you about, first, your relationship with him. And then second of all, a lot of people, of course, don't remember Art LeBeau um, from the earlier, what I call the earlier days of radio, mm. post-World War II radio. But he was, uh, of course, Art and I grew up on the East Coast. So we we knew people like, knew of people like Alan Freed, Murray the K. Right. Art LeBeau was a West Coast guy, but he was also a national figure. Right. Yeah, he, he he was a national figure. His 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 real name was Arthur Ignolian. He an Armenian broadcaster. He was born in in Salt Lake City, and uh, he started his career right when he was in the military during World War II up in Seattle, uh, getting a job up there in uh, in in the uh, Pacific Northwest. He brought his brand of broadcasting down to Los Angeles after the war. And he became very popular right when rock and roll was hitting its stride with Elvis. Sure. And so um, many uh, radio buffs or radio historians say he's one of those who engineered the rock and roll movement. I would halt that argument and, and simply say that maybe Alan Freed or Murray the K were, were more instrumental. But art what he did is he brought that rock and roll blend of of broadcasting to the west coast and he had an affinity for for soul or r&b music so when elvis was able to blend his r&b and gospel roots into rock and roll that fell right into art's breadbasket and uh he really was great friends with with artists like the platters and the mm. coasters yeah. and little richard yeah uh, these these folks who were able to blend r&b with rock and roll he was really really big on that now to answer to your first question um i came along uh six months before i graduated from ucla back in 1980 and i discovered that they were looking for someone to work the evening shift at krla which is where, the home of art lebeau for many many years beginning in 1976 and I applied, and though I didn't get that particular job, Art saw something in me and decided to hire me anyway, but he put me into the promotions department the, as, a, as the assistant promotions director. I hadn't even graduated college yet, and I was already, I already had a, a, a job in the, um, a, a, you know, that wasn't just talent or, or, or just being, a, you know, like an like a intern or something. I was actually in, in, in management. So that that was that started my career, and part of my responsibilities was to go on the air at live events and like do quick little remote type stuff. And so impressed, I guess, was Art and, and the program director at the time, Jack Roth, that the following year, almost almost to the day, the following year, um, they did actually put me on the nighttime show, and I and I held that position. And Art really mentored me, fostered me, gave me indispensable advice as how what I need to do to contain to 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 create a lo longevity with radio broadcasting and I was blessed to have that knowledge from a man who who knew it well and and, and would end up having a 79 year broadcasting career yeah mm -hmm. well there's no question he was a legend mm -hmm. and so yeah. uh, so uh, uh you have kept in touch with him uh, through the years, though, it, it, that wasn't just a like he was a great mentor. He started you off, but you had a lifelong relationship with him. 
till till well, the past, just recently. You what was it within the last yeah, year? Yeah, I, I hadn't talked with him real recently, but yes, I, I maintained a correspondence with him. I, I worked with him at the, his oldies but goodies uh, building. I should mention he did invent and coin the term oldies but goodies. He's known for that. And he created the um, oldies but goodies or the oldies uh, genre of music as a format for radio. So, I mean, he really is a pioneer when it comes to broadcasting. And yes, I did keep great correspondence with him uh, as late as when I decided to create my book series, my forgotten Hollywood book series. Art would say, well, you know, you need to do something that you have passion for that you can deliver to your already uh, familiar audience and step out of my formidable shadow. Now, I always thought that was a funny thing to say because he was five, six and I'm six, four. But <laughs> but, <laughs> but I thought that was very kind of him. And he kind of guided me into that whole idea. Of maybe I should pursue a forgotten Hollywood career as an author. So even as late as that, he was already really trying to mentor me in, in my career. And I always listened to Art because he was so knowledgeable and he always made suggestions with a smile, with with radiance of friendship. It was never anything where he batted you over the head. He just wanted you to do well. And I know I'm speaking for a great many folks who came in contact with Art LeBeau. Yeah, I know the, mm. the Hollywood community at large, film and television and radio, uh, all mourned him universally. Right. Uh, and it's, uh, but he lived a long, long life. And if I'm not mistaken, you told me that his show, even though he's passed, his show is still on the mm -hmm. air. It's still running. His uh, his syndicated program run up and down the uh, West Coast and into the Southwest, locally in Los Angeles. It's on KDAY, K-Day, on the FM dial. And uh, they're doing tribute shows now where, where people are coming on and, and singing their praises of this really, really wonderful man. Um, there is a tie as you mentioned, you alluded to, to Hollywood that, that began real early with Art LeBeau mm. back in the 50s. Of course, um, as Elvis was about to make movies, uh, Art wanted to get that elusive interview that was always hard to get because of Colonel Tom Parker's real uh, command of, of how Elvis's career was going to go. Somehow he managed to interview uh, Elvis, which was a real find in, in, uh, on, on the West Coast because that just didn't happen. Uh, never really had a, a major friendship with, with Elvis, but he did um, meet him off and on from time to time in the 1960s. His real friendship came with, believe it or not, it's amazing how many people mention this name all the time. I guess he was so affable and made so many friends. Art actually had a friendship with um, Frank Sinatra. Hmm, and uh, Art, he had a show in Palm Springs. And I, of course, a, a resident of Palm Springs was Frank Sinatra. And he tells a funny story. I, I interviewed him in 2012 and I, I'm, I played it back on my podcast recently, Manny Pacheco's Forgotten Hollywood. Anyway, he, um, he mentioned how um, they were such friends over the years that one time he was walking down the street in Palm Springs and Frank was walking with Ava Gardner, his then wife. And he goes, hey, hey, Art. And he, he leaves Ava standing on the street to come over to talk to Art. And, and Ava's just sitting there or standing there just waiting <laughs> as they're having a conversation. And, and Art's finally like, well, isn't that Ava? And I mean, what? oh, yeah, yeah, she'll hold. You know, Frank's like, oh, yeah, she'll hold. And I, I think it's just a, a remarkably funny story. So yeah. uh, only Frank Sinatra could walk away from Ava Gardner. I, exactly. I mean, that's that's true. <laughs> By the way, Manny. <laughs> Uh, if people want, yeah. uh, you you uh, you mentioned uh, in, in sort of in passing uh, your podcast, uh, and uh, I'm sure there's a really extensive, interesting uh, uh, conversation uh, and retelling of stories that you have with Alt LeBeau. But where can people yeah. see your podcast? Well, actually, they can hear it. It's an audio show. Manny Pacheco's Forgotten Hollywood is on Spotify. It's also on Casto, C A S T O S. And so you can you can hear my shows. I got 38 episodes up as of this uh, interview, but I'll have more each week. Every week I drop one and it's going to be at least 92 episodes long. So I, I have a, I have a lot in the can ready to play. And I'm pretty excited about that. One of the things I did when I interviewed Art for that podcast is I asked him what his favorite movies are. Not many people knew that Art LeBeau was a real cinephile. He loved mm. movies. And he loved reading books about movies. If you saw his library of books, almost 
uh, all of his books had a Hollywood tie-in of some kind. And two of his favorite movies, I think, would surprise you. He was a big fan, as you were, John, as you were growing up. We've had this conversation before of those serial Westerns. Yes. So he thinks that the culmination of all of that and the great Western of his lifetime was Shane. He loved Shane. He yep. loved the way Alan Ladd portrayed the character. He's a big fan of Billy De, uh, Brandon DeWild and um, and Van Heflin and Jack Palance. I mean, he just loved, loved Shane. And the other film he loved, obviously he was a big fan of these films from the mid-50s, was uh, Viva Zapata, which, oh, was yeah. the, which was the film with Marlon Brando and uh, where Anthony Quinn wins an Academy Award as playing yeah. Zapata's brother. So these were two of the films that I know for a fact because I have it in the can in an interview that he absolutely adored these films. And so it's kind of nice to hear another side of art when everybody knows his broadcasting side. It's kind of nice to hear the Hollywood side of art as well. Yeah. Mm. Well, Manny, thank you so much because uh, you really are our Hollywood connection. You know so many people, not just in the film industry, but in broadcasting. And so this is, this is really a treat to hear uh, the behind the scenes about Art LeBeau. Well, I want to thank both of you for the opportunity to talk about my dear friend. I mean, this is, this is a rare treat for me, and, and it helps me get through the, the amount of grief that I have in losing my friend. He, he lived yeah. to be 97, so that, that's a good long life, and I'm, it was a life well, well lived. Great. Yeah. Well, thank you, Manny, and uh, our audience thanks you. And uh, it's, it's, as John was alluding, it's great that you're not only an historian, but you know a lot of the people and you've paid real close attention. So some of them are real friends and some of them are so, you know so much about them. Uh, I bet they wish you were their friend. Anyway, you're our friend and you're the friend of Celebrating Act Two, and we thank you very much. Well, thank you guys. And we'll do this again real soon. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.